Welcome back to Tifty Whiskey. Uh, as you can see, Keith is not here today. He's doing some cool diving things. And instead we have John from Those Dragonsers, a fellow yes whiskey podcast. Podcast, not, not, yeah. Not YouTube. No, we don't we don't we don't go into the YouTubes at all. Uh it's too advanced for us. So we're we're thankful yeah. that we have you guys. <laughs> so he's from the area, and uh we're just gonna go ahead and dive into a new whiskey. Uh, but for the next five episodes, John will be joining us. Joyce, what are we drinking today? Today you are drinking. Dewar's Japanese Smooth Dewar's Japanese Smooth is the latest expression of the Dewar's Smooth line. It is a blended scotch, aged for 8 years and finished in Mizanara oak barrels for 6 months. Mizanara oak is a native oak tree to the island of Japan and offers new flavors compared to the more traditional oak species like American and French oak. This bottle comes in at 80 proof. We paid $23 with it usually priced around $24. As always, your prices may vary. Enjoy. Thanks, Joyce. For this whiskey, I do know what we're drinking, but these two will not. Let's dive in. Ooh. I'm not sure what the note I'm getting is, but it's like silky. Silky. It's very smooth. Creamy? M maybe creamy is a better word, but it's not thick like cream. Oh. I don't know what the what the actual note is though. So I'm getting like a very much almost like salt water. I do agree there is that like salty. Mm-hmm. So like salt watery. Brininess? Yeah, brine. There you go. Perfect. Yes, brine. I like it. It's not like spectacular, but it's yeah, good. It's, there. it's solid. I'm not getting blown away by it. Yeah. I'm going to go in for a taste. I get that brininess too, still. A mm -hmm. little bit of peat on the back end too. Towards the middle. Um, that brine definitely hits at the front. No, on the nose, I'm starting to get this a coffee caramel note. I do agree with the caramel side of that. Less so on the coffee. It was like a. I don't, like a Coffee flavored, like hard caramel. Like Werther's original, but like coffee. Yeah, it's like coffee. Gotcha, gotcha. I think okay. it was even like Werther's original with co like, like mm -hmm. coffee. Like, it's like coffee. I'm add a little water. Yeah, I added some. The brininess comes back at the end, too, with the finish. There's a spice note on the nose. For me, the nose turned into a milk caramel instead of like a hard caramel. It's not like a milk caramel, almost like a cow's tail. That silkiness is now more creamy, like if it's a little thicker. There is a teeny bit of a spice that you're talking on the nose, on the palate. The legs seem to run pretty hard on that. I don't even know what that means. The, I'm the, guessing it's the, the, the things running down. Yeah. yeah, it's called the legs. Yeah. Just like in wine, but it, it just means similar, but different things. Typically, if you have um, more oily, so like sometimes usually like an older aged product, mm -hmm. that's not that's not water filtered down or watered down, you know, in, in the process, like the, the finishing process, you'll get that like, and they'll cling. And then they'll just like slowly drip down. Right, so something that's usually a little a little faster, kind of like these ones, probably has a little bit, and and you know, I mean, I'll hold my what my proof guess is, but uh, based on what I'm thinking, it probably has been at like water had been added to proof it down towards mm. the end. I don't hate it. So we're gonna dive into some ratings now. This one was difficult. It is difficult for me to rate on the nose. I'm gonna go three. Yeah, I'm gonna go three even. I like the notes I was getting. Bland is not the right word. It's Average, mildly inviting, not like, well, it's the most inviting whiskey I've smelled. On the palate, I'm gonna go 3.5. The palate was a little bit better than I thought it was going to be based on the nose. I really enjoyed the notes I was getting, but again, there just wasn't a wide variety of notes there to pull out. The finish, I'm gonna go drop back down to a three. It was good, but not excellent. I wasn't crazy about the nose just because I wasn't getting a lot from it. Started and ended with the brine, brininess with mm -hmm. me. Once I got that, it's kind of was the only thing that was sticking out. So I'm going to give the nose a two. Nothing blew me away other than the brine. On the palate, again, nothing crazy, but I did enjoy it. So I'm going to go to a three on the palate. I got that brininess in the palate. I got that peatiness that I got on the nose as well. A finish, I'm going to drop back down to a one. It lingers a teeny bit, but then it goes away, right? You get that brininess at the end, then it kind of just teeters out. I don't get any hug from this. It doesn't really stay with me. So I'm going to go down to a, a one on that one. So for the nose, I'm actually going to give it a 3.5. That may just be because of my nostalgic notes I was getting with the caramel mm -hmm. coffee. And I just really enjoyed that note. For the palate, yeah, I was going to probably back down to like a 2.5. Mm -hmm. um, just, it was good. It was fine. I did enjoy the nose more. And the finish, I was just gonna go down to like a two. It was okay, it, was, it, was, it could be better, but not a whole lot of flavor there on the finish. All right, so now it's time for your <clears throat> guesses. 
We want to know what kind of whiskey you think this is. Okay. What proof you think this whiskey is. Okay. What you think a retail is for this bottle and how much mm-hmm. you would be willing to pay. I'm not sure on what type of whiskey I think it is. I do think it's a scotch. I'm going to say it's 80 proof because it's a scotch. I'm going to say it retails at 22. I would not be willing to pay that. I'd probably pay 16. You'll have to specify kind of scotch. If you I won't. To. I won't specify. Okay. If, if, he's, if he does, the, the, if he's closer than he could. <laughs> he wins. Isla. Oh, okay. you're going to specify region, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll specify region. Okay. Single malt. You're going to say single nope, malt? Nope, 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 <laughs> nope, 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 nope. I'm already walking that one back. <laughs> nope. I'm going to go ahead and put... That would that would knock my price off. Uh, I'm going to agree this is a scotch, but I'm going to uh, challenge your region. I'm going to go space side. Space side. Space side. Space side. I'm, I'm horrible with it. I'm I know sure. I butchered. I, pro- I I apologize, Scotch fans. Because of that brininess, Space side you use it because it is so closer to the water than particularly Islay. They get a lot more of a brininess on the finish. See, I want Islay like, because of the brininess. I tend to mm-hmm. f- get that from. Mm-hmm. So, um, just from my experience, I'm going to go Space side. I'm usually always wrong. So, uh, you know, at least I'm pretty sure this is a Scotch, but then again, I have been wrong a lot. Proof. Let me give it another. I'm gonna go 82. Wasn't getting a crazy lot, especially because I didn't get the hug. So I'm gonna go. That. I'm gonna drop the, the that. What do I think this retails for? I've never done this before. So this is kind of exciting. I'm gonna say 25. I'm gonna go with the whole you know tariffs kind of. It's kind of probably jacked up the price when it came across the the, the water. Uh, I'm gonna 25. Um, and I would pay 25. For so those are the guesses. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal some information about this bottle. And then we're going to try out doing your whole... Our rating system? Yeah, your rating Excellent. system. Okay, so we're, I'm going to tell you the price, and then you guys can decide if that's a buy bar mm-hmm. pass based on that. So the price is approximately $25. Do me explain what yeah, yeah, go I'm for about it. to... So on our show, on our podcast, um, we use the buy bar pass rating. Uh, however, because we our show is called Those Dream Answers, we Pittsburghese it. So uh, instead of a buy, it's a has... Instead of a bar, it's a downtown. You want to go try it downtown at a bar. And uh, it, instead of a pass, it's a throw it out. I don't want this throw it out. I don't even want to buy it. Knowing the price range, which again, with this show, that's, you know, obviously there's a cap, right? Yep. I don't have many scotches. And I did enjoy, even though I kind of gave it a lower, I did enjoy this. For 25 I, I would put this at a house. I have enough scotch at home. <laughs> so. See, I don't. So <laughs> I put this at a Downtown. Okay. Downtown. Yeah. All right. All right. So I was teetering on that, but because I don't have a lot of scotches, I would buy 25. Yeah, sure. You're also assuming this is scotch. Well, yeah, that is fair. <laughs> <laughs> but at $25 and the notes I'm getting, I'm going to say, yeah, it's definitely scotch. <laughs> okay. So today you guys did drink a scotch. Today you guys had Dewar's Japanese Smooth. Ooh. Shut the front door. This is a eight year old blended scotch. That has been finished for six months in Miznar Oak Cask. So this is part of their uh, their smooth line. They've done the Caribbean Smooth, uh, which we have not done a review yet because I can't mm-hmm. find it anywhere. <laughs> uh, the Portuguese Smooth, which we have done, and the Mezcal or Illegal Smooth, which is a Mezcal mm-hmm. finish. And then this is their latest one. I... Yeah, yeah, go for it. As I've said in previous episodes about the Smooth line, I love this idea from Doers. Now that I know what it is. Mm-hmm. House. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. I'm definitely sticking with that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, because, you know, when people, they only, they think doers, they think the, the white label, the yeah, yeah. typical well that you see, right? Um, so when you're, especially when you're getting into Japanese, now that this has some sort of Japanese tie to it, whole, wholeheartedly It becomes house. a conversation piece yes. Yes. with that. Yes. I always like to do a shout out. The master blender uh, at doers is uh, Stephanie McLeod. And they've been doing these series of smooth lines, different finishes and stuff, which is great for us who are, especially in our price range, because mm-hmm. this is, how often do you see finished whiskey in, like for, especially for uh, finished Mizner Oak Cask. Mm-hmm. The last time I saw Mizner Oak Cask finished whiskey, it was like a hundred dollars. Right, yeah. I'm not finding this around Let's here. Let's put it mind. this way. When are you gonna find this type of finished mm-hmm. whiskey for under 30? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So being able to experience what Mizner Oak does to a whiskey yeah. um, is super cool. And Mizner Oak Cask, for those who don't know, are Oak Casks from Japan using their particular tree of Miznar. Those casts are really expensive. One, because they're all of a sudden really popular. Two, because they give some interesting notes that do take some time to like come out of the woodworks. And uh, three, because the tree um, looks crazy and does not grow straight. <laughs> so it, so making a barrel out of the tree it's is really hard. hard. And Stephanie has said that they're doing more finishing series whiskeys. Like they're not mm. done yet. 
So I've done Ooh. four so far. I don't even know like what else at this point. Maybe cognac, maybe cherry. I don't, yeah, I don't even know what else they're going to be doing, but I'm super excited for that. All right, so that's all we have to say about this bottle. If you like what we're doing, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this bottle, if you've had it. And let us also know what kind of finishing you'd like to see doers do. And until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This drink's on me. me.